Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mark Dirks, and I'm the Digital Media Coordinator at Choice. On behalf of ACRLN Choice, I'd like to welcome you to today's program, Right in Style, uh, APA Style Showcase, which is sponsored by the APA. Before we get started, I'd like to point out a few features of the webinar software. In the main area of this screen, you can follow along with the presentation materials. Along the left-hand side, you should see a chat panel, which you may use to submit questions or comments. At the end of the presentation, Melissa Sarasso, our moderator today, will pose your questions to our panelists, so please feel free to submit those throughout. You will also see a separate box for technical questions. Please use this feature to bring any technical difficulties you may be experiencing to our production team's attention. They will troubleshoot those issues with you privately. Please also note that today's program will be recorded, and all registrants will receive follow-up instructions on how to access the archive version. In addition, we'll launch another poll now to start the session. If you could take a moment to respond, we would appreciate it. All right, and it looks like a good number of you have not yet uh, tried APA Style Central. That's, that's fascinating. All right, and, and now it is my pleasure to introduce Melissa Sarasso, the Science and Technology Editor at Choice, who will be moderating today's presentation. Before coming to Choice, Melissa was the Evergreen Systems Manager at Bibliomation, Inc., the largest library consortium in the state of Connecticut. There, she managed and maintained Evergreen, an open source integrated library system utilized throughout the entire consortium. During her tenure at Bibliomation, she fulfilled the role of lead project manager for the new union catalog, and the new interlibrary loan system for the Connecticut State Library. In addition, she was the project manager for Bibliomation's library migration projects. Prior to her employment at, at Bibliomation, Melissa worked in multiple library settings, ranging from providing reference services for a document delivery company to cataloging government documents for an academic library. Melissa holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in English from the University of Connecticut and a Master's of Library Science degree from Southern Connecticut State University. Melissa, over to you. Thanks, Mark. I'm glad to be joining in the presentation today. I would like to take a moment to remind our viewers that today's discussion is one in a series of sponsored webinars from ACRL and Choice that addresses new ideas, developments, and products of interest to the academic library community. Free to users, these structured 60-minute live presentations provide the opportunity for interactive discussions of important new issues and developments in academic librarianship by librarians, vendors, authors, and other interested stakeholders. Our presenters today are Emily Ayubi and Chelsea Lee. Emily is the Business Development Director of APA Style. She leads content and product development for the full APA Style product line, including APA Style Central. For the past 12 years, she has worked in a variety of editorial and product development roles with progressive leadership advancement at APA. While in graduate school, she became inspired to develop innovative and comprehensive educational solutions to help foster the next generation of researchers and writers. Our second presenter, Chelsea Lee, began working at APA in 2007 as a copy editor and since then has developed expertise in all things APA style. She answers APA style questions from the public, writes for the APA style blog, and was intimately involved in the creation of APA style central. When she isn't living and breathing APA style, she enjoys swing dancing and spending time with her husband and one-year-old son. At this point, we're ready to get started, so I'll turn the floor over to you, Emily. Great. Thank you, Melissa. I'd like to start uh, by giving you all some background on APA style central before showcasing some of the core resources and functionality. APA Style Central is a web-based application offering a suite of integrated services and tools that facilitate learning and empower users to become better researchers, writers, and scholars. We just released it to the institutional market on July 11th, so if you haven't signed up for one of our free trials, you're still among the first to see it since it launched. The primary audience consists of undergraduate and graduate students and their instructors and librarians, of course. 
Now, because the publication manual on which this is based is geared toward researchers submitting manuscripts for professional publication, our users have made it clear that there is a need for an APA-style digital solution for students. We've conducted focus groups and interviews, deployed surveys, and have analyzed feedback from thousands of students, instructors, and librarians. And we learned throughout that process that in the absence of an online APA-style solution in the marketplace, students, librarians, and faculty have been turning to disparate sources to learn, teach, and apply APA-style. And in some cases, have had to develop their own guides. But until now, there hasn't been a comprehensive and interactive online educational platform from an authoritative source. So APA Style Central was developed as a 24-7 APA Style Mentor designed by APA Style experts to help coach, nurture, and guide students throughout the process of writing their papers and navigating many of the challenges associated with that. And rest assured, we feel your pain too. It's also designed to ease the burden for those of you who are often tasked with providing APA style guidance in addition to your regular workloads. Therefore, students will always have somewhere to turn for APA style guidance, even when instructors, librarians, and our own style experts have gone home for the day and their paper is inevitably due in an hour. So although it is rooted in the rules and guidance provided by the publication manual, it goes well beyond the scope of the book to offer an interactive and integrated educational solution for the 21st century student. Therefore, we not only feature content from the publication manual, but have also adapted content from the full APA style product line and beyond. And it represents the latest thinking and includes the latest updates to APA style. We've also completely revamped and repackaged our guidance to make it more engaging and accessible, um, especially for students, and to promote learning reinforcement and retention. The product philosophy is all about education. So everyone who uses APA Style Central will learn something new about APA Style. We've um, added minimal but strategic automation with this application. Uh, so rest assured, it will not automatically format and write papers for your students but rather encourages them to develop critical thinking and writing skills and take ownership of their work. So in looking at the home page here, you can see that APA Style Central has four key centers that cover the life cycle from learning and research to publishing and writing. And each offers step-by-step -step guidance throughout. So we've designed the application with maximum flexibility in mind so users can navigate freely across centers and access content and resources at their point of need. But for the purposes of this demo, um, let's start from the beginning with an overview of the Learning Center. So here we've arrived at the landing page for the Learning Center, which is a rich digital media library replete with over 130 learning objects. And all of these can be linked to in your library pages, libguides, learning management systems, and anywhere else you can edit HTML. LTI integration is also available. We've got various content types, uh, starting with uh, the quick guides. Uh, we have 66 of these that cover concrete AP style rules across eight different categories, ranging from references to mechanics of style, writing style, page formatting, and bias-free language. Now, these are all task-based and are intended to provide quick answers to the most common APA style questions. Now, these quick guides and tutorials and self-quizzes, which I'll go over next, are all video-based. Um, I will pull up an example of one of our tutorials just so you can see what that video format looks like. So here we have our premier tutorial, Getting Started with APA Style. And you can see we've got a video player. Um, it's got the standard uh, navigation. You can review thumbnails and tooltips and navigate using the thumbnails or advance um, through each of the screens. And of course, we've got audio. Um, and we also have interactive pedagogical devices along with uh, learning prompts. Now, these tutorials are a little more in depth um, than the quick guides. Um, they are intended to uh, cover substantive professional development issues across writing, research, 
and publishing. And they're a little bit longer than our quick guides. The quick guides tend to uh, range from three to five minutes, um, whereas the tutorials go from uh, 10 to 30 minutes, and in the case of getting started, um, up to 60 minutes or so. But again, you can watch all of the tutorial or just specific sections um, if students um, do not have time um, for the entire tutorial or just want to get to specific content. Over here, I'm clicking on the self-quizzes. Uh, we have 10 sets of these, and these are intended for practice and to gain mastery in core APA style areas. Students get immediate feedback on correct and incorrect answers, but they do not receive scores. And they're all mapped to specific quick guides and tutorials. So as long as they viewed the corresponding quick guides or tutorials, they should be able to fare well on the related quiz. Now for scoring, we do offer tests. However, um, these are not included within the product itself. They are intentionally omitted from it um, because they are administered via an institution's learning management system using the LTI standard. But again, they are mapped to the same core concepts as the self-quizzes. So as long as students have viewed the quick guides and tutorials and taken the self-quizzes, they should do well on the scored tests. The other content types you see here um, relate to our sample materials. Um, we have a set of sample papers, sample references, sample tables, and sample figures. Um, these are intended to model effective scholarly writing and presentation. Currently in the application, we have 17 sample papers that cover different paper types in the social and behavioral sciences and beyond. Um, we also offer over 146 sample references, and these include anything that we've published in the sixth edition of the Pub Manual, um, our electronic references guide, as well as our blog and social media, and then um, several references that are unique to APA Style Central. So you would just um, click on the reference type of your choice, and you will see a perfectly formatted reference in APA Style. And similarly, we also offer the sample tables and sample figures as well. And then, of course, if you want to store any of your favorite learning objects, you can do so and access them directly from the My Favorites tab. So that's an overview of the Learning Center. Next, let's head on over to the Research Center. And I've landed here at the home of the Research Center. And this is an area that helps students learn about conducting research, plan and track their research, and manage their references. So over here on the left in this first column, users can access research tutorials. Um, these are the same tutorials that are housed in the Learning Center, but they're highlighted here in context. They can also um, look up terms and definitions um, from our two premier dictionaries, including the Dictionary of Statistics and Research Methods and our parent dictionary, um, the Dictionary of Psychology, second edition. We also offer uh, the full text of 17 of our quantitative and qualitative research books. Uh, these are delivered uh, via PDF of each of the chapters and can be read online or downloaded for offline reading as well. Now over here we have the research tools in the second column. Users can get assistance with developing, planning, and tracking their research using the Research Lab Book suite of tools that functions almost like an electronic research notebook. Now these tools are highlighted here, but they're actually integrated with the Writing Center, which we'll look at shortly. Um, and as with all the tools and resources in APA Style Central, users can access them sequentially or they can use the, choose the ones that are most relevant to their work. So they're designed uh, to cover that step-by-step -step educational guidance uh, to help them navigate the research process, uh, but they don't need to use um, all four. They can use one, they can use two, three, or all, all of them, and so forth. So the first one is the Develop My Research Idea Tool. And this um, includes a series of six open-ended questions to help users refine their research questions and home in on a research topic that isn't too broad or too narrow. 
uh, very similar to the Goldilocks effect, uh, to make sure that they are um, doing something somewhat novel, but still able to substantiate their findings with the extant literature. We also have the Plan and Track My Research tool. And this allows students to create a research plan, including any hypotheses and proposed methodology and data analysis, and then track what actually transpired throughout the course of their study. Now, as with any of the tools, they can use these independently, or these can be submitted as an assignment as part of their coursework. We also have the Describe My Test and Measures tool. Um, this is an interactive worksheet that allows uh, students and researchers to fill in data about any tests or measures or inventories that they use throughout the course of their study and helps them generate a paragraph for their method section. Then the final tool in this suite of research tools is the Track the Flow of Participants. This, this helps users go step by step throughout the process of tracking their participants from recruitment to any dropouts, um, as well as um, logging incomplete data and so forth. It helps um, them generate a flow chart that can then be imported as a figure into their papers to track the attrition of their participants throughout their studies. Now, this final area relates to reference management. Now, there are three ways to create references in APA Style Central, so I will briefly go over each one. Here we've arrived at our reference form area. Users can use one of more than 80 customized APA Style Forms that will assist them with manually adding references to their My References library. Now, the My References library is simply the global reference library that is native to APA Style Central. Now, each of these forms guides users through inputting each element of the reference, um, ensuring that they don't miss any required fields. Um, and it allows uh, the system to then generate a properly formatted APA style reference in their paper. But again, given the uh, product philosophy and emphasis on education, um, we provide um, uh, contextual help as well as links to any relevant learning objects so that students can better understand the rationale and um, understand what's going on as opposed to just automatically um, uh, formatting a reference for them. So that is how you manually create a reference in APA Style Central. However, you may already use um, a reference management system such as EndNote, RefWorks, Zotero, or Mendeley. So you needn't start from scratch um, by building your reference library in APA Style Central. You can simply bring in um, your entire reference library by using our RIS import feature. Now the third means of ingesting references into APA Style Central is to use an adapted version of PsycInfo, which includes over 3.4 million pre-formatted references in APA Style. So let's just do a Run a quick search here. So I'm going to enter in online learning, and it's going to scan that adapted version of PsycInfo. In a matter of seconds, I pulled up over 9,000 search results for online learning. And what it's doing, it's, it's highlighting any relevant terms um, and it's providing the, the fully formatted reference along with the corresponding abstract. So I can simply review my search results and then click on any that are relevant to my research, um, and then those will be imported into that My References library that I mentioned. So we've learned a little bit about APA style, and we've conducted our research, and now we're ready to write and format our paper. So next, we'll head over to the Writing Center. So I'm going to click on Write at the top, and I will arrive at the Writing Center landing page. And I'll have two options here. I can write a new paper, or, or I can go to My Papers. Now, My Papers is similar to My References, but it's a document library for any of my papers. 
So I will briefly show you what happens when I click on Write a New Paper. And I'm provided with the option to select one of eight templates. And these are um, the most common paper types in the social and behavioral sciences and beyond, many of which are mentioned um, in the publication manual, um, with the exception, of course, of the reaction paper. Um, again, APA Style Central is oriented toward um, higher education, so we, we, we've added uh, paper types that are commonly assigned to undergraduates and so forth. However, um, don't be deterred. If you do not see your paper template type here, you can always click on the basic paper, which is similar to the blank document in Word, and write any APA style paper of your choice. And it will include all of the educational resources and tools and robust functionality that you would have with any of the other paper types. Um, the only difference is all of that educational guidance is targeted toward um, the particular paper um, that you're writing. So in the interest of time, we're not going to be able to write a paper together. So I'm going to do a little Food Network magic and pull up a paper um, that we've already written. So what it's doing is it's going to my papers, which is my document library. I will click on a paper um, that I've already written. And it's going to load my document. And what you'll see here is the online editor. Um, and this is a fully collaborative authoring tool. Um, over here on the left, you get an outline pane. And you may recall that I mentioned the research lab book tools, which we looked at um, over in the Research Center. These are actually integrated here in the online editor. That way, you have access to all of your research notes and anything else that you may have compiled. Um, and you can pull that up while you're writing your paper. We also have forms that help you create your title page and abstract and keywords. And then over here is an outline of all of my headings. And what's nice about this is it dynamic, dynamically refreshes with what's in the online editor. So any headings that I create over here will dynamically populate over here in the outline and vice versa. Now while we're here, you may notice these green and red dots. Um, this is because this is a collaborative tool. So the green dots indicate that I have access to those particular sections, whereas the red dots tell me that this is locked for editing by Chelsea. Um, so I can see everything that she's doing. I can comment on it. I just can't edit it while she's actively working on the paper. So if I'm the paper owner, I would wait until she resubmits the sections back to me, at which time I can edit anything she's written. Or if, um, if need be, I can also reclaim the sections at any point um, if, if she's unable to resubmit them to me for whatever reason. So at the top, we also have the Preview tab and the Collaborate tab. The Preview tab simply shows you what the, uh, the paper will look like um, in Microsoft Word. So you can check all your formatting. Um, you can make any changes that are needed before you download um, it to either a Word document or PDF. And then similarly, the Collaborate tab just helps you manage any roles and permissions assigned sections, and so forth. Then we also have this pane over here um, with these icons. Um, you can customize your paper sections. So you may recall that I was offered um, eight uh, template types um, when I clicked on Write a New Paper. Um, each of those template types uh, provides a student and a professional version. So if I click on a student version, it will omit the author note and abstract and keywords by default. But perhaps my professor wants me to gain practice um, in writing abstracts. So I could always customize my paper and add additional sections that weren't included by default without having to start all over. Then we also have this comments pane. So if Chelsea and I are collaborating on this paper, we can um, make comments to each other. We can resolve the comments and so forth. And we also have this help video window. Um, and this is simply application help in video format. So if I needed um, to watch a brief uh, tutorial on how to 
um, set up my um, in-text citations and use that tool and ASC, um, APA Style Central, and learn more about the robust uh, functionality and all of the features within our online editor, I would watch one of those videos. Now, the last icon is uh, related help. So if I needed more information on um, the paper type I'm writing and wanted to pull up a uh, quick guide, I can do so um, without having to go back to the Learning Center. I can also watch a tutorial, look at some sample papers, and pull up uh, verbatim pub manual text. Now, we've designed this to appeal to different learning styles and needs. Um, some people prefer to watch videos, others prefer to look at sample papers, and some people just want the pub manual text. So you can certainly do so at any time. You would click on that, it'll open a new tab, and it will give you the targeted sections of pub manual text, in this case, uh, sections 2.05 to 2.08. So I'm getting the full text of those sections straight from the pub manual. And again, um, I haven't done anything. I haven't had to leave my paper. I only have a couple of tabs open, and I'm able to review my research, watch some learning objects, pull up a pub manual text, and so forth. Now, all of these panes um, are, are resizable. So if you wanted a larger online editor, you can make it full screen. Um, if you wanted the outline to be larger, you can do that. Um, so you can really customize it according to your needs and preferences. Now, the last pane I want to draw your attention to is here at the bottom. Now, you may have noticed that I didn't have to scroll very far um, to have access to um, my reference list. Now, this is showing me my paper reference list by default. Um, however, at any point, I, I may recall that I had other references that would be pertinent to this paper in my references global list. I can easily toggle between the paper reference list and then the my references list and bring those in as well. And then the same applies to tables and figures and so forth. It will show me by default the tables I've included in my paper um, and the same with the figures, but if I know I've created a table or a figure for another paper, I don't need to remember um, where I created it. I can just seamlessly pull up the My Tables global collection and I'll have access to it. So i just like to show you one more thing um, related to this online editor. So I'm going to go back to my papers. And again, that's just going to pull up uh, all of the papers that I've created in APA Style Central. So we'll go over to this paper. And here I'd like to show you um, our in-text citation tool. So you may see as I'm, I'm hovering over these in-text citations, they're now highlighted. That's because I've used the in-text citation tool in AP Style Central, and this has been completely customized and designed by AP Style experts who know all the ins and outs of in-text citations, so the application understands um, what order to put them in, when to use et al., and so forth. And again, we're instructing students along the way. Um, the onus is still on them to ensure compliance with APA style, but we're providing them the resources, tools, and content at their fingertips. Um, we're trying to take the, the, the bite out of APA style and make it um, a little more uh, pain-free and encourage learning. Now down here, um, you see my paper reference list, and you may see these green visual markers um, that say cited. Um, these are intended to provide real-time feedback on what's included in the body of your text above. So as I mentioned before, um, when we were designing this um, as Word users, we found ourselves endlessly scrolling through Word documents, 30, 40 pages of text, trying to make sure that we had accounted for our references with in-text citations in the text. Um, with ABA Style Central, we've been able to ease that burden by providing uh, real-time feedback. So this tells me I've cited these references that have that green uh, visual marker there, 
but I've, I've got some work to do here. I've forgotten to cite this Aber and Baker references, therefore it's not indicated as cited. So that means I need to make a decision. I either cite it in text or I delete it from my reference list. Um, and similarly, we have uh, the same feature for table and figure call-offs. That way you know right away um, whether you've accounted for tables, figures, and references in text or not. And then you can make a decision um, as you go along whether to include or exclude those from your paper. And as you've seen, um, I didn't have to go through pages and pages of text or do control F or anything like that. The system is automatically letting me know. Um, but if you don't notice those for whatever reason, we do offer a check services feature. Um, and this will, again, flag any um, references that aren't accounted for in the text or tables and figures. Again, it's not going to auto-correct anyone's paper. It's simply going to flag um, some, some key errors uh, commonly found in ET cell um, papers. And then the, the decision is up to the user whether to make those changes or not. And we also have a heading um, check as well, um, that way to, to make sure that you you're using the appropriate level of headings. It won't make any corrections for the user. It will simply prompt users and ask, did you intend to put a level three heading directly under a level one heading and so forth. So, and then as I previously mentioned, um, once you've uh, written your paper and you've run check services um, and you're satisfied with it, um, you can export the paper to Microsoft Word or PDF. So I do want to underscore that while paper formatting is taken care of for users, including fonts, margins, title page setup, running heads, and the like, um, this is part of that minimal but strategic automation I mentioned that is designed to free up cognitive resources for the more substantive tasks involved with research reporting and writing. So we're really trying to encourage uh, learning where it counts versus having uh, students memorize that the current default font for AP style is Times New Roman 12 point and so forth. Um, so really that way they can focus on, on what matters most in terms of encouraging the next generation of researchers and writing. So once you've uh, checked it and exported it, it, of course it will always be saved and available um, within the application itself. So once you've written your paper and followed our research reporting, writing, and formatting standards, you may be interested in submitting it for publication if you're a graduate student or professional, or perhaps you may just want to learn more about publishing practices. Um, if so, you would then go over to the Publishing Center. And here you can consult relevant tutorials Again, these are housed in the Learning Center. We've simply highlighted them here in context. Um, or you can browse or use our advanced search feature to find potential outlets for publication. So I will just briefly show you what happens when you click on our Browse Journal feature. I will click on one of these, and it will provide a key information about that particular journal, including the publisher, um, along with uh, data that represents the, the last three years or so. Um, you can find out about age group, methodology, population group, tests and measures, keywords, index terms, and so forth. Now, if you've decided this looks like a good outlet for uh, publication, um, we also have this submit manuscript feature. And when you click on that, it will direct you to the um, landing page for that particular journal so that you can go ahead and submit your manuscript for publication. So those are the four centers available to all users. But of course, I also want to direct your attention to the admin center. And here we have a link at the footer, so it's on every single page. Um, and this pulls up our admin center. And here you can um, download MARC records. You can, of course, add your uh, co-branding for your institution. 
You can receive instructions for setting up your LMS integration, um, get platform analytics, including number of learning objects viewed, accounts created, number of papers, and so forth. So that is APA Style Central in a nutshell. Uh, next, I will turn it over to Chelsea, who is one of our style experts, and she will highlight some of our top APA Style questions and where to locate answers within APA Style Central. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Chelsea Lee. I'm a product, <coughs> product development manager of APA Style. And uh, one of the parts of my job is that I answer style questions from the public. And so I spend a lot of time hearing from students, librarians, professors about the uh, issues that they're most concerned about with APA style. So I'm going to take you through a few of those today and then share with you how APA Style Central can help uh, people find the answers that they need. So to start off, uh, one of the biggest issues for new users of APA style is where do I start? Often the publication manual can seem daunting to have to read you know, hundreds of, of pages uh, to find your answers. And the uh, tutorials in particular, just to draw your attention there, in our learning center provide uh, many different ways that you can get an introduction to important aspects of APA style. Uh, some of the topics that we cover are the basics of APA style, which Emily showed previously the beginning of that tutorial. We also have tutorials on plagiarism, on the research process, on finding resources, on how to title your work. And so it's a great way for the like faculty professors to share with students this vital information that they need to know to get started with APA style. Next, a really common question has to do with writing references in the reference list. And I want to draw your attention here to the quick guides that Emily mentioned. These are also part of our Learning Center. In the Learning Center, the quick guides are arranged by various topics. And one of those topics is the reference list. And there's a whole slew of different quick guides that are focused on different types of documents. So if you want to know how to cite a book, you would go to the book reference quick guide. And so some of the common questions that users have that you can find answers for in these quick guides would be things like, how do I write a reference for this particular source? How do I cite a website? What do I do if information is missing from my reference? How do I use electronic location information like DOIs and URLs? So all of those important questions are addressed in our quick guides. The next question is about creating in-text citations. And we also have a uh, topic-based quick guide set on in-text citations. And some of the questions that you will be able to address here are how to write an in-text citation for any particular source, how to format direct quotations, how to paraphrase and include citations, and then sources within other sources, which are secondary sources. So this gets into more of um, topics related to plagiarism, related to writing style, that uh, will help users become better writers. Next up, we have uh, issues of wanting to check that your references are correct. One of, I think, the most exciting features we have are the reference templates that Emily mentioned. And this is a way to not only get your reference formatted correctly, but also to understand the way that references are put together. So by seeing the form, users can understand that we're asking for the same information uh, over and over again, you know, what is the author, what is the date of the source, what's its title, and where did it come from? And so it will really help users learn and understand APA style in addition to producing correctly formatted APA style references. And then the last one I wanted to highlight is about paper formatting. Uh, we get tons of questions about what size the margins of the paper is supposed to be and what is the line spacing supposed to be. And the really exciting part of the Writing Center is that these details get taken care of for you. And so uh, some of the 
things that fall into this category would be the sections of your paper will always be in the right order. The margins of your paper are set up correctly. Your fonts are set. There's line spacing and the running height and the page numbering are set. And so I'd like to transition over to the application and show you guys the uh, preview and export function in a little bit more detail. So I will do that. Okay, so here we are in the Writing Center. I have a paper open uh, in my screen in the edit mode. And if I want to see the way the paper will look when it's finished, I'll go here to Preview. And I'll be able to see the whole paper assembled with margins. It's like the print preview version, essentially. And so it'll begin on the title page, and you can see Here's my running head, the margins, and then you'll use the arrow keys to go through the various pages. So we have our abstract, and then here's the text. Now if I want to jump to a particular page, it takes me right there. You can see that all the references are formatted with the hanging indent, the correct spacing, they're alphabetized for you, and it's all set up. So this helps students especially who want to make sure it's working correctly, that you can always check in on your paper as you're going by using the preview. And then the other um, function that Emily mentioned before that I'll just highlight is with the export that you can download it and it'll be either in Word format or PDF format. and so if you are wanting to have your own copy on your local machine, then it comes out and the, the formatting is the same as you saw in the preview. And then you have your own copy. So with that, I would like to transition back to the, um, to the presentation. OK. All right. So I'm not seeing the slides. Hold on one second. We'll make a quick adjustment there for you. Great, we're just making a quick technical adjustment here, but we'll be back with all of you in just one second. Hi again, everyone. Sorry for that. So to sum up, um, we have the ability to format your paper in APA Style Central as well as to download and export it so that you can use it wherever you need to use it. And the files are, of course, always stored in your own account for APA Style Central. So that wraps up my portion of the presentation. And we now have time for a question and answer session. And before I turn it over to Melissa to facilitate that, I would like to draw your attention to uh, some web addresses and emails 
on the screen about if you have other APA style questions and you want answers that you can visit us at apastyle.org or send an email to styleexpert at apa.org. We have uh, social media accounts on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. If you have questions about APA style pricing or trials, you can contact APA Style Central at apa.org. And if you have support questions related to APA Style Central, please contact support at apastylecentral.org. And now, Melissa, over to you for the question and answer. Thank you, Chelsea and Emily. This is Melissa Sarasso from ACRL and Choice. We have time to field a few of your questions, so please type any questions you may have into the chat panel, and we'll do our best to get to them. For now, it looks like we have a few questions in the queue already, so I'm going to start addressing those. Betty from San Diego writes, from the trial, we had problems with missing publication titles and dissertations. Has this been corrected? Uh, yes, I can feel that, and I actually checked that yesterday morning, and I'm happy to report that we have all the titles in there for dissertations and so forth. Excellent. And then another question that we have is from Jill from Birmingham, Alabama. My library has a trial now. Am I right that PsycInfo is the only searchable database in the research portion? That's correct, um, but as with any product development um, effort, uh, given that we just released this, um, we of course plan to make continuous updates and improvements to both the content coverage as well as um, search features, functionality, and access to other databases and resources. Great, and another question is from Julia. In Michigan, if I find an article in the SAGE database, is there a way to export the citation to APA Style Central? Um, right now, the way to export citations or import them into APA Style Central would be to use um, uh, one of four reference management systems, including EndNote, Zotero, RefWorks, and Mendeley. Uh, but um, we are looking to expand our RIS import coverage as well. Beth from Pennsylvania writes, how does the citation tool work with articles without a DOI? Does it include the URL for the journal homepage, for example? Um, it would depend on the reference type, but uh, certainly, um, you know, we, there is um, an ability to capture the URL. Okay, and then Paula from Purchase writes, do you need to create an individual APA style account? Yes, so um, you can be authenticated via IP or proxy access, which gives you um, access to the learning objects and so forth. However, in order for us to be able to save and store your papers and references, you would need to have an account that is associated um, with, with a particular user. Okay, and this is a recent question that just came in from Deborah in Los Angeles. Can you tell us more about the trial? Um, I will hand that question over to one of our sales, marketing, or customer relations staff who are online. Yeah, this is Tim Rinda. I'm the marketing director for um, APA Style Central and APA's database products. Um, yeah. Free 30-day trials are available uh, for an institution. What I would suggest is you contact us at the APA Style Central at APA.org address um, with an email uh, showing your interest, and we can set that up uh, with you. Uh, again, it's an IP-based um, trial, and you'd be able to broadcast that to as small or large an audience as, as you would like on your institution. Great, thank you. Leticia from Fullerton, California asks, are there plans to have the full text of the manual be available down the line, for example, an APA manual ebook? 
Um, we're, it's certainly something we would consider. Um, right now, so everyone's aware, um, we do cover most of the publication manual within APA Style Central, um, with the exception of the front matter and back matter and so forth. Um, and as I previously, previously mentioned, of course, APA Style Central goes well beyond the scope of the publication manual and incorporates uh, uh, all of our APA Style resources along with um, many of our, our research books and other uh, references. But um, we're certainly open to exploring a further expansion of that down the line. Great. And then Sandra from Flagstaff, Arizona asks, once a faculty member leaves or graduate students leave, do they download all of their work or would there be an alum program? Right now, the way it's set up, um, users uh, can download their work. So in the case of a student that graduates, um, he or she would have the opportunity to download any papers and anything that he or she has created in AP Style Central. So even once that access is expired, they wouldn't be able to um, pull up the learning objects or use the online editor, collaborate on a paper, and so forth but they will be able to download anything that they've created um, in their accounts. OK, and this question works back to the trial. For this trial, can we set up the individual accounts so um, individuals can see what these look like? So we'll hand that over to you, Tim, or someone else in sales and marketing. Sure. Yes. The the way the trial works, it's it's really access to the full live product. So um, anyone who's using taking advantage of the trial can set up that individual account uh, so that you can actually write papers and uh, create references and so forth. So um, as Emily mentioned previously, in order to get to those portions, you do have to individuals will have to set up their own uh, accounts, uh, which will save their individual uh, contents. Okay, and Dan from Boston, Massachusetts asks, what type of plagiarism software do you offer? Great question, Dan. Um, we get a lot of questions about integration with Turnitin and other plagiarism detection software. Uh, currently, we do not have the, uh, any integration with Turnitin or comparable software, but it's certainly something that's on our radar. In the meantime, we do have a wealth of resources on avoiding plagiarism and self-plagiarism in the form of learning objects, um, but that's an enhancement that we will um, explore for future consideration. Catherine from Loyola Marymount University asks, can we embed the tutorials, help guides, quizzes, etc., into our LibGuides? Yes. Yes, we do have uh, links uh, that can be embedded into LibGuides or any websites that you may have. And basically, that would uh, point uh, users back to the application. But you can certainly um, link uh, to any of the uh, learning objects. OK, and Paula at Purchase asks, can a student upload a paper that they have previously started to use the writing or references tools, or does it have to be written in APA Style Central? Another great question. Um, currently, um, you have to write it in APA Style Central, although you can certainly copy and paste content from Word or other programs. Um, we are exploring the ability to be able to import already written papers from Word and so forth. Uh, but at this time, you would write the paper uh, within APA Style Central. Um, but if you had content from another source, you can always copy and paste that um, into your document in APA Style Central. Um, but then, of course, you would need to use our features and functionality, like the customized uh, APA style heading tool to make sure your headings are in APA style and so forth. All right, and this question just came in from um, an anonymous person. If you have APA style central, do you need to have Word on your computer? No, you do not. Um, it's it's compatible in the sense that you can copy and paste content from Word and you can export to Word, but you certainly do not need to be a Word user in order to uh, write a paper in APA Style Central. 
And again, related to Word, Julia from Detroit, Michigan asks, do formatting errors occur when exporting to Word? Um, not in our testing. I mean, the preview function uh, that we showed you and that Chelsea pulled up allows you to quickly check to make sure that um, everything will look good in Word, but we haven't encountered any actual conversion errors in um, exporting a paper to Word. But it's always a good idea just to double check that you like the placement of your headings and so forth because you are writing it in a web-based based editor versus exporting it to Word, which is going to give you that print layout um, and show you exactly where content falls on a specific page. So it never hurts to check that preview function before you um, export your paper to Word or PDF. And another question by an anonymous individual, does it work on Mac and iOS? Yes. And Jill from Birmingham, Alabama just asks, would you still recommend students purchase the manual if a school subscribes to APA Style Central? We've designed it so that it's compatible. Um, so if you have a, a print manual or the Kindle version, you can certainly use it as you go along. It's not compulsory. Um, you needn't purchase the manual necessarily, but it all the manual does serve as a, a great companion to AP Style Central. And this Chris, this question comes from Christy from Boca Raton, Florida. Is APA Central available by subscription with unlimited seats, or does it price does its price depend on how many simultaneous users we want? It's based on an FTE model. Again, I'll hand I'll hand over any pricing questions to our sales and marketing staff. Um, but a anybody within an institution can access it. But the pricing is is according to FTE. I don't know if is there anybody from sales or marketing that has anything else to add about that. Uh, this is Tim again. I would just say uh, again, if you have specific questions about pricing, because it is FTE based, that you would contact us through that APA Style Central at APA.org email address, and one of our uh, representatives would get back to you to go through. Um, the specifics for your institution, and also uh, we do offer consortia discounts as well. So um, that would be the best way to approach um, the pricing, but it is not limited by seat in this particular case. Well, it looks like we're about out of time. Thanks to all of you for your questions, and thank you, Emily and Chelsea, for spending time with us today and for sharing some wonderful information on APA Style and APA Style Central. I'd like to take a moment to give you both a virtual round of applause. Great job. As a reminder, we have recorded today's program, so be on the lookout for a follow-up email from ACRL and Choice that will include instructions on how to access the archive version. Thanks again to everyone for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the session, and have a great day. Great. Thank you.